There is so much good news happening with XRP and Ripple and all the conversations around X.com and how they have got this like payment approval thing. We're going to get into all of that in today's video. But first, something you've waited months for has been so much work in the background. It's no emotion 2.0. That's right, No Emotion 2.0 is now launched. You can actually go below this video and look at all the collection and buy them and go to the website, have a look around. There's some new designs on there. We've also added to the classics range, which is like what this is. There's also a white version of this. We've also got the zip up hoodie that's now in navy that you can buy. And my personal favorite design, the Rising Phoenix. So this is the moment that you've been waiting for and that I've stressed over. Pick up your No Emotion clothing today and stay tuned for a little announcement, a little challenge for old David Schwartz. So let's start with this Rhode Island currency transmission law that X.com, previously Twitter, just got approved for. Everyone's going crazy about this because one of the implications of this law is actually a framework around using potentially cryptocurrency for payments on X.com. It's no secret that Elon has talked lots of times in the past about X.com being an all-in-one app. That means everything from shopping, currency transfer, payments, social media, video, who knows, data storage, all kinds of things. He wants X to be that all-in-one platform. And this whole law, although it is restricted just to Rhode Island for this application, is not really just about Rhode Island. Specifically, the law is about Rhode Island. But what this does is way more important than you realize. Something that's really important for payment approval licenses is that you have precedent. When you have precedent and you pass it onto another jurisdiction, like in the States, every single state has its own jurisdiction and law, the decision to approve licenses becomes significantly faster and it compounds as time goes on because you've got more and more precedent behind you. This whole thing about X.com having this approval in Rhode Island shows the rest of the states and the rest of the world that there is precedent for approving X.com as a payment provider. So why would you need this license in the first place? Well, it relates to digital currencies and the transfer of digital money. You have to have this license as a business in order to transfer currency. Now, it doesn't specifically mean it has to be cryptocurrency. It could be any kind of virtual currency. But the reason why people are getting so excited is because, in fact, blockchain and crypto based payments do fall under the umbrella of this law, essentially meaning that X.com has set the precedent in Rhode Island for the rest of the world to say that it can process cryptocurrency based or blockchain based payments. That is massive. That is literally the first step in taking X.com to be the everything app. What's interesting is that X.com will not be a bank. And here's why. Because if X.com were a bank, they wouldn't need this license. In fact, federal or state chartered banks don't need this license. But being an agent with the bank or being a bank's customer doesn't exempt you from needing the license. So basically, if you're a bank, you don't need the license. But if you're not a bank, you do. So what type of businesses do need a license? And let's see how this can reveal what X's intentions are. If you're sending money to customers, that could be wire transfers or electronic transfers, you need a license. Essentially, this license allows people from person to person to send money on X.com. So that could be a crypto or it could be just a digital version of money. But what's really interesting is that this all happens now 
when XRP is deemed not a security. Why is that interesting? Well, you are only allowed to transmit currency under this law, meaning that Rhode Island, at the very least, are viewing crypto or blockchain based payments as currency, not as securities. But then you've got the question, this is actually leading me down a massive thought process here. How can Rhode Island say definitively that blockchain based payments are OK if it's a currency when there's only really one asset with clarity that it's not a security? Every other crypto asset is not a currency definitively, especially when you talk from the SEC's perspective. There's only one asset that is in the clear as definitely not a security. That's XRP. So if I deduce and, and draw these connections and connect these dots, does that mean X.com uses XRP as the only digital asset with clarity? In other words, a currency? I don't know, maybe I'm stretching a little bit there, but this is like fascinating to dig under the pages, you know, and have a look to see what's really going on here. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. So with that in mind, how do Rhode Island actually define virtual currency? Like what's their actual definition for that? Can that give us extra clues about this XRP thing? So I'm going to read it here. Rhode Island law defines virtual currency as a digital representation of value that can be digitally traded and functions as a medium of exchange, a unit of account or a store of value. However, it doesn't have legal tender status. Interesting. So of course, we're not only talking about cryptocurrency or blockchain here. It could be any virtual currency. But specifically, when we talk about cryptocurrency, there's really only one crypto asset that can be 100% confidently put out as not a security and therefore as a currency. And that is XRP. So there's lots of ifs layered on top here. But if X.com wanted to use cryptocurrency, then they would have to use XRP, just based on the terminology of this Rhode Island law. But if X.com didn't use blockchain technology, they could use any other virtual currency that isn't legal tender. So from the cryptocurrency standpoint, we've really only got XRP that has that full regulatory clarity. I would anticipate that because of the time in the game that Bitcoin and Ethereum would also get a slice of this pie just blindly without actually having that clarity of legality. I'm just finding like time in the game that Bitcoin has had, time in the game that Ethereum has had, has almost like, well, Ethereum's a special case. I'm not even going to say that. But Bitcoin has already got this kind of trust even though there's no legal clarity on Bitcoin. It's kind of this weird situation. So let's say on the cryptocurrency standpoint, you've got Bitcoin and XRP. We all know the best choice for user experience anyway. But then you've also got that fall under the virtual currencies category. You've also got tokens and these could be utility tokens. And this, this would be to access kind of specific applications or services within a blockchain ecosystem. You've also got security assets, and these can actually represent assets like shares in a company. So this is fascinating as well. X.com, you could potentially trade your stocks or really these tokens that represent securities. Then you've also got NFTs that fall under this token category where you could trade your NFTs. So let's think of more than just monkeys here, right? Let's say we've got an NFT contract. It's a smart contract essentially held within an NFT. Let's even say it's a mortgage. We've got this mortgage held in an NFT and somebody wants to buy it off me on X.com. I can literally send it to them using X.com. Send ownership of my house on X.com. But then what you also have is this whole other category of token called stable coins. We all know this one. So that's USDT, US, USDC, Binance USD. These would all fall under the virtual currencies law. And interestingly enough, you would also have these like social media issued tokens like Libra from Facebook or even listen to this one points on Reddit. So, you know, on Reddit, where you, you contribute to a community, you get points. You could even transfer the points on X.com as virtual currencies. Then you've also got all of like the gaming in gaming tokens like like V bucks in Fortnite. You could transfer World of Warcraft gold. Or even if any of you have played Clash of Clans, you could you could send your gems on X.com. It doesn't just stop there. It's like airline miles you could send. You could send credit card reward points or retail loyalty points. And here's where it gets particularly crazy, right? Because if we're talking about virtual currencies, you could also potentially use DeFi related tokens like Compound or Aave or even Yearn Finance, for example. 
in order to do activities on DeFi like lending and borrowing. Digital assets with legal clarity outside of the DeFi system, so therefore more liable to be on the institutional side, which is XRP, all, all the angles point towards XRP. And that's even with all of those assumptions that X.com would use XLM just because of Elon's kind of affiliation with Stella in the background. Only XRP has that clarity. So I don't understand how you could navigate any other way when you're dealing with payments using digital assets. Obviously, payment is a broad spectrum, like you could be paid in V-Bucks on Fortnite. That is a form of currency. So we're just going to have to see how this is all going to play out. But certainly the market that XRP would be taking here in the payment sphere versus, for example, Fortnite V-Bucks payments, you know, it's a different ball game. So I'm not worried about Fortnite taking over XRP. I'm just saying there's levels to this. In addition to all of that, in 2017, India really started taking a stance on Ripple. They partnered with RippleNet, or it was, it was called something else, I can't remember. But you had Axis Bank, you had Standard Chartered, you had another bank as well. In India, getting ready in 2017 with their partnerships with Ripple. Now, as, as it's gone on, time has gone on, 2017 to now, six years have gone by, and Axis Bank have just announced that they're empowering users with UPI integration in their digital rupee so essentially, the CBDC of India is running on a system with banks that are affiliated with XRP, actually partners, public partners of Ripple. Now, all of these partners of Ripple at any moment can say, we want to use XRP. And so this update to the app, this UPI, this digital rupee app, the update that occurred basically added interoperability. It's a word we talk about all the time, of course, but it's so, so important. So a UPI is a unified payments interface and it utilizes this technology that we thought was way gone and then COVID happened and then it came way back, QR codes. So essentially you can use QR codes on their app to send digital rupees. And it's made the payments process all across India just super simple. And this hits a whole kind of basket of different types of payments. I'm going to read them off here. You've got peer-to-peer -peer collections and payments. That's when you send or receive money from family or friends. You've got bill payments like your utility bills, your internet bills. You can pay all of these on this app using a QR code. When you go into a physical store or you buy something from an online store, that can use a QR code to process the payment. You can also use these QR codes to see your current balances. You can set reminders for payments that you have to make. Essentially, QR codes linked with the Indian CBDC, which is supported and partnered by Axis Bank and a range of other banks in India that are all using Ripple technology to do so. India is like, sec not secretly or silently, but just, I feel like they're coming out of nowhere and just like, here it is, real use of a retail CBDC. <laughs> the great thing is it's so easy to trace back the Ripple connection to India. And this brings a bigger conversation. How much say does India have in the whole BRICS expansion? It seems like over the last six years, they've been working with Ripple. You would imagine there's a level of trust there and experience that India have with Ripple, that that at least has to be a conversation from India, taking it to the rest of BRICS. We're using this system, it's been flawless for the last six years. We're pushing it out even further because of our level of trust. Maybe you should, as a group, the BRICS nations, have a talk with Ripple. And I say all of that like they haven't already met. I am sure there's been conversations like that. When you're looking at interoperability, this is the important thing. We need that interoperability between all of the different BRICS nations digital currencies. They all need to interoperate. Where that ledger is, whether it's on the blockchain or not, or whether it's their own blockchain, that's a bigger question. But certainly, if we know India are using Ripple technology, India are a big player in BRICS, I wonder how much of a conversation that has created, or whether it just reduces the barrier for India to be involved, or BRICS to be involved in simply moving payments from inside of BRICS to outside of BRICS using this trusted provider in Ripple. It's also an interesting thing to consider when people are scanning these codes, let's say they want to send money from their app, from this digital rupee app, cross-border, they will most certainly use XRP in those transfers. It's just a case of like where we are on that. Are the retail focusing a lot on cross-border payments? Maybe. There's lots of people from India who travel all around the world for work and send money back to their family. Potentially that's where the market is for XRP in that scheme of things. And then the next level of that would obviously be from 
The, the big banks like Axis Bank sending cross-border payments with their trusted provider, Ripple, and utilizing XRP underneath. We're coming to we're coming to a conclusion of one part of this story. I think we're coming to the conclusion of the days that we call speculation. I think there's there's going to be speculation involved in the next kind of three or four months. There's going to be speculation moves. The prices, I would imagine, going to go up. Whether this is the true utility moment, I don't think so. But the steps are being laid. Like the foundations have been built. We're putting on the slabs now to build these steps. I think India's at the forefront. You've got England, India, Colombia, Palau. Like there's big entities here, even Zamunda. <laughs> but the path is clear. Just like the path is clear to go and get some no emotion. That was a cheeky plug at the end. Click the images below this video if you want to buy some of these clothes. If the images aren't there, you can click the link in the description. Represent no emotion out on the streets and pay attention to the little announcement I'm going to make about David Schwartz. Uh, today or tomorrow. Stay motionless. I'll see you in the next one.